So this video is going to be about the MyFair 1K Classic uh, S50 uh, Legacy chip. So this uh, chip was one of the very first high frequency 13.56 megahertz um, chip types that was uh, essentially kind of secure. I'm using a lot of air quotes here. But um, the idea was that uh, it used this proprietary algorithm called Crypto1, and that was used to um, secure authenticity of the card. So you could create uh, and define different sectors as having different keys or permissions based on those keys. And each sector uh, could be set up as part of a long running application on the card, or it could be uh, multiple different applications, each using one or more sectors. It was a very kind of versatile uh, chip type, and because of that, it became rather ubiquitous for things like transit, ticketing, um, laundry tokens, you know, um, food tokens. You'd load up kind of value on the card and use it, um, access control, those kind of things where additional security would be a, a good idea. Um, but the problem was, or is, that that kind of chip... Uh, you know, using a proprietary Crypto1 algorithm had vulnerabilities because early chips were limited in power and processing. They couldn't really use standardized encryptions. Uh, so, you know, Crypto1 was created and it's vulnerable. Um, so there's been cracks and things developed for it. The ubiquity of this chip, though, is what perpetuates its use because when you deploy an entire infrastructure to support this kind of card or chip type, you know, even if a vulnerability is found, you kind of start hedging your bets. Well, it's going to cost X millions to replace all our infrastructure and cards and reissue everything, or we might face, you know, uh, some amount of fraud. And what what's going to be more expensive, the fraud or the or the kind of rejiggering of all the entire infrastructure and everything to support a more advanced card type or chip type? So you'll still see this kind of card <clears throat> commonly used in systems today. Um, you see some different uh, things on the table here. We have a Legic card. Legic is an access control system, and it's very popular in certain parts of Europe. Um, it's used globally, of course, but it's very popular in Europe. Um, we have this uh, two Chuck E. Cheese Play Pass, and um, I would have like an Opal card, like a transit card, uh, but they're they're old, and they actually did get a, around to discontinuing the MyFair Classic 1K chips in their cards. Now they use a Deskfire, which has standards encryption and can't be cracked. But uh, we'll just use some of these as an example. The other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about too is the um, the two different looking Proxmarks here that I have. So this is the kind of standard Proxmark. It has the LF uh, antenna on the top and an HF antenna, but it is not on this middle PCB. The HF antenna is on the bottom PCB. And this middle PCB is just a spacer. And in fact, it can be taken out which is what I've done here. Um, you can see that middle PCB is gone. And now we can clearly see the HF antenna on the lower PCB. That's going to be important uh, later on, particularly when dealing with the XM1 device, which is a magic uh, MyFair 1K Classic chip. The magic means that you can actually make changes to sector zero, which includes the ID number and some other things. So um, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about really is the cloning of uh, these types of you know, classic 1K cards into products like the XM1. There's also a Flex M1 version, um, but we won't get into that in this video uh, because the Flex M1 comes in two different varieties. There's a Gen 2 and a Gen 1A, and there's some important differences there. But for, for this video, we're just going to talk about the XM1, which is a Gen 1A Magic MyFair 1K chip. Um, so to get started, we're going to take a look at um, one of these cards. So yeah, let's do this one. And what I want to do first is kind of outline what the memory structure looks like. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to get to tag info. And we can see tag info here. Um, and essentially, we're going to read this um, card with this uh, phone running tag info. And the thing that's interesting kind of about the 1K Classic um, well, this is kind of fun too. You can see unknown manufacturer, unknown MyFair class IC, possibly cloned. That's probably because um, I haven't tested it yet, but it's probably because this isn't actually a uh, NXP MyFair 1K chip. It's probably, to be honest, a Fudan F08, which is not a knockoff, but it is, um, you know, essentially a drop-in replacement for the NXP version, which is kind of like the licensed MyFair uh, producer of those chips. But um, if we go to full scan, we can see that there are 
uh, different memory sectors. So this is sector zero. That's where I said, you know, the ID lives. And um, there's some other things in here called the MAD, the MyFair application directory. Um, then there's sector one, two, three, and they're pretty much open. Uh, you can see the default keys are there, so we can read all the memory contents. Nothing's been blocked. Um, but, you know, essentially, that's what these uh, little play pass cards are, except you'll see right here in sector one, uh, key A is unavailable. So uh, we can't read, uh, well, we can read it. We can read that memory structure, but we don't have the key. So this is probably a classic example of the cards keying system, the crypto one system being used for authenticity checks only. It doesn't care about protecting the data really. Um, the value that you load on this card is not stored on the card. It's stored in a database and in the Chuck E. Cheese, you know, uh, back room or something, but um, but that key is used by the machine to run an authorization with the key. If it succeeds, we know, oh, okay, we're talking to the card and it's not some spoofer or something. So it's just a very low level check. Is the crypto one accepting the key? If it is, great. Um, so essentially we're gonna try to take this, um, <clears throat> we're gonna try to take this card and we're going to uh, attack that key and try to get it so that we can do two things. One, we want to clone the ID number of this card to the XM1 implant, as well as that key. Uh, we want to make sure that all the data is consistent and basically it's a perfect clone of this on the on the implantable device. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and just use my modified Proxmark here for this. I'm going to put it right there. And you can see we're already in the Proxmark 3 client. And what I'm going to do uh, is very easy. So uh, in the previous videos, and again, if you haven't seen the previous videos of Proxmark, uh, the introduction, how to use it, exploring commands, LF cloning, probably want to check those out as well. Uh, there'll be links in the description. But um, for this, we want to use the high frequency menu or HF. So we type HF, enter, and we can see we've got 14A, which is the one uh, ISO 1443A stuff, which is what the MyFair Classic 1K chip is. However, um, that's just a generic menu of ISO 1443A functions. Um, you can see there's a bunch of stuff in there um, that's only applicable to those. But because we want to do something special, because this is a MyFair and we want to uh, essentially go after the, that key, we want to use the HFMF menu, MF being uh, MyFair. You can see in the list there. So if we hit that, we can see, oh, wow, we got a lot of... Uh, we got a lot of commands to explore here. So, and you see there's even a magic Gen 1 section and a magic Gen 3 section. Uh, they separate out the, separate out the commands uh, for those particular types of uh, devices. Again, uh, Iceman, uh, Chris Herman is doing a great job with making this firmware accessible, feature rich, and it's all, I, I really love it. So, and here's another reason to love it actually. What we're looking for here is under the recovery section, we're looking for autopone. Uh, with pwn being a kind of a hacker term for own or, you know, cracking and getting at keys, things that you want to own. Uh, and so we're going to use that. Um, <clears throat> my fair, uh, yeah, HF, my fair, and then auto pwn. So this is going to run through really quick and do some various kinds of attacks to see if we can get at that key. So it's running through all the memory structures. It's found key A for sector one, and it's written a dump file. And you can see that file contains the ID number, all the memory contents, the key, uh, basically everything we're going to need to be able to write that to the XM1. So we're gonna see how to do that. So I'm gonna have to break in here and just mention, um, I said it on other Proxmark related videos, but the thing about the Proxmark is that the commands that are uh, being shown here in this video, they might be different from the commands that you might experience because those commands tend to change over time um, when with different firmware versions and different branches of firmware. This All my Proxmark videos are focused on the Iceman branch of the firmware, but even within that branch, the commands might change over different versions. So if you have a later version of firmware, of course, this video is shot, you know, as a moment in time. So if you have a different version of firmware uh, that's much later down the line, the commands may change. This is why it's important to know how to explore the Proxmark commands and menus rather than follow step by step. Um, I'm not anticipating the commands, in particular, these commands will change all that much, but it's important to understand that they might and how you would, you know, figure out what the proper commands would be 
uh, in the future if, if you, you know, understand how to explore those command sets in the menus. So essentially what we're going to do is the HFMF, my fair menu, and we can see under, uh, whoops, I didn't need to go up, uh, Magic Gen 1 section, there is a few, there are a few commands here, but the command we want to see is C load, which means load dump to card. Um, load to card, it's uh, verbiage wise, English wise, it's a little bit awkward, but we get it. So we're going to take the dump file and put it to the card, which in this case, we're going to take this card off and we're going to use the XM1. Uh, we're going to load that dump file onto the card, or clone it, write the, write the data into this uh, XM1. Now, if you are using a standard Proxmark, of course, the HF antenna is on the bottom PCB. You're not going to see this part. So if you're going to be doing it on an implant, you're going to want to take the bottom of this Proxmark device and put it on your hand or you know, wherever the implant is over top of it. And you're going to want to position it like uh, like this, such that the uh, the perimeter right is perpendicular to the implantable device. So if you have your implant parallel to the bone, you're going to go something like that. You know, where you're placing the implant is here. You want the Proxmark to cross over it on the bottom PCB. You're going to have to hold it there while you write, uh, you know, manipulate the keyboard to make it happen. But that's how you would do that with a standard Proxmark. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, HF, my fair, and we're going to go C load. And then I'm going to need to go back up and find the file name. The file name being this. And you know what I forget if it's the binary file. I think it is the binary file version that we need to use. Um, but, you know, again, the Proxmark menu being what it is, um, I just do the command HF MF C load. And I'm like, eh, what, you know, I don't enter any commands or anything after that or any parameters. I just hit enter and it gives me a help menu. Thank you. Um, so now I know, okay, it's the emu file, I guess, that we're looking for, the email. Um, so C load. We're going to do the file name. Oh, no, the EMU is the emulator memory. We want to use the file. So dash F, and then we're going to go, uh, I'm just going to go paste and replace EML like that. So that should dump, and you can see the ID number right there, 04DD0F60. That should dump that into this um, XM1. So we're going to hit the, mon hit the button, and it's doing the writing, and you see that it's done. Now, again, uh, we have to be very clear that when you're writing any digital data to any digital medium, hard drives, you know, USB sticks, <laughs> car, you know, RFID <laughs> implants, the act of writing does not do any verification. Um, you know, when you write data to your hard drive, the computer, everything in it just assumes it was written successfully. It doesn't check to make sure that the memory storage medium has actually retained the data that's been written. You have to do a verification for that. Uh, I don't know if you remember like old CD-ROMs and stuff where you burn them, it says, do you want to verify? And it was a very long check to make sure that the media actually pick up all the data correctly. Um, so in this case, we're going to do HF search. And we can see, okay, it did find a tag and we see the UID is 04DD0F60. So that's correct. That's the same uh, ID number that we just loaded into it. Um, so that's good. So we assume that that worked and now you can take this and uh, maybe try to, you know, ride some rides or whatever at, uh, at, uh, at Chuck E. Cheese. But again, to be clear, this is not like a real hack because there's no value stored on the card. It's simply an identifier for an account. So if I, I would still need to, you know, load up the account with the appropriate funds that would update the backend database. And then I could use my implant to do the writing of rides and things. I don't, I wouldn't need to carry the card around, but it's not like I'm, you know, uh, circumventing some kind of uh, value system or I'm stealing uh, free rides or anything like that. It's just simply taking this token and turning it into an implantable token so I can use the account appropriately as, as was intended. So that's exactly how you would do that kind of clone. The thing that I really like about this process is, again, Proxmark uh, started our life as a very kind of user-unfriendly <laughs> device. And now, thanks to the efforts of Chris Herman and Iceman Firmware Fork that we put on all of our Proxmark 3 devices we sell, uh, it's super easy. As you saw, like it just handles all the different methods and then creates a dump file for you. You just load the dump file right onto your target device and you're good to go. So that's uh, excellent work uh, by Chris and, and his um, collaborators. So uh, we're very thankful for that.